Hi everyone, it's Mojax and I'm in the lab today looking at the Vestax PBS4. Now this is the most complicated video I've done to date. Not because the product itself is necessarily complicated, but actually trying to show it to you and demo it to you in a way which is useful is kind of complicated. Um, this thing does a lot of different stuff basically. At its core, it's a video switcher designed so you can stream video and audio over the internet. That's kind of its main selling point that's how they push it is it's a web broadcaster so what you can do you can run in a microphone or you can run a line input from your dj dex mixer whatever controller into this you can run multiple cameras up to four cameras or a vga source or an hdmi source run those into the unit you can switch between the video so i've got two cameras and a wd tv hooked up here and on the preview this is the preview up here and i've got the two cameras so there's camera one or camera two rather, and there's camera one. And I can switch between those like so and switch over to that's the, that's coming over the HDMI. Now, the thing with this, first of all, let's get the limitations out of the way, okay? Because they're very clear about that, even on the Vestax website. This is a standard definition device, okay? It's not HD. It's got an HDMI input, but that's only gonna support devices which will output at PAL or uh, NTSC standard definition, okay? You can't run an HD 1080p source into this and have it play nicely. It's not gonna work that way. It's got the VGA in, which is, again is restricted in resolution to 1024 by 768. Okay, so you are running all in SD. There's reasons for that. The reason being mostly is one of cost. This is a consumer device, and so it's designed to come in, I mean, the price in the UK is under 400 pounds. If you're looking at an HD solution, something from like Blackmagic or something like that, you're looking at easily twice the price of that if not more. So if you're just someone mixing at home in your bedroom, you want to broadcast on Ustream, just in TV or something like that, you really don't want to be dropping over a grand on a Blackmagic HD system to stream in HD. Even if you've got the bandwidth to do that, then this will do the job perfectly well. Standard def, video switching, audio mixing, all in the box in one go. So that, that's why it's SD, you know. Um, otherwise though, I mean, it's a, a nice sturdy bit of kit. It's a nice layout, sits nicely on your desktop. You've got all the inputs and outputs you could need. So we'll just go through how it's gonna kind of, all the features on it first, and then we'll look at how it might integrate into what you're doing. So you've got two audio inputs there with switchable between mic and instrument level inputs and line inputs on phonos. You've got a third audio input there, which is just a line. And those are all switchable down here. They've all got gain controls, little trim controls and level controls, and you can cue each one with the headphone socket on the front of the unit. Now, the first one then, yeah, mic and line switchable. Second one, mic and line switchable. That one's also switchable to the HDMI. So if you've got audio coming in, if I had audio coming in from this WD TV box here, I could have that playing through into there as well. And the third one, you've got line and you've got loop back. So when you install the drivers into your computer, as I've got on my MacBook Pro here, then what you can do if you've got audio playing from a video that's just playing directly in your computer or from a presentation or something like that, you can feed that audio through the driver back into this over USB. Okay, so as I say, it's complicated to get your head around. Once you do, you'll probably be fine with it. It's, it's just one of those things you've really got to try and work out how it's going to work. So that will loop back the audio and that will then stream that audio from your computer back out to the internet through the other half of the driver. And you can do this all with one computer. So if you're doing a DJ set and you wanna use your software and your computer, Tractor or Serato DJ, something like that to actually do the set and then stream out to Ustream or Justin TV or whatever, you can do all that with the same computer with this device hooked up with one USB. If your computer can't cope with that, then you can run your DJing software in one computer and run this into another computer and send out to the internet that way. So there's various options that you can work with. As I say, then the video inputs, we've got four composite standard video inputs on the top there, one, two, three, and four. Number two, if you plug in the HDMI, that will override the composite input on the top. Number four, if you plug in the VGA input, that will override the composite input on number four. So what I've got set up here, then I've got, um, um, you've got basically two outputs. You've got the master output, which is the one that's going to the computer, and you can also have a, an output going to a TV or to a projector or something like that as well and then we've got a preview output. So I've got the preview output connected to this television here. And so what I can do is I can preview any of the channels. So right now I'm previewing channel two. I can switch then to channel one and that's got the camera on it there, which is that camera 
right there. And then I've got on number three, I've got another camera right there. And these are the Master Mix cameras, which are from Vestax as well. They are available in a package with a PBS4. They're basically like CCTV cameras. So they're very, very deep depth of field. Everything's in focus. And they're also very good in low light. So, you know, they're, they're really excellent cameras if you want to use them like live in a club or something like that, or just in a, in a darkened DJ mixing lab, then they'll do the job for you very well. You could hook up old DV, you know, mini DV cameras. They're available for peanuts these days. You know, you get a used mini DV camera for like 30 quid or something. Plug that in with the composite out from the AV out on the camera into this, and you've got a camera ready to go. A lot of those have night shot function as well, so you can have really good low light performance. You can get a composite cable for the GoPro cameras. You could run four GoPros with composite into this. You know, the options are really wide open for you. And as well, as I say, you can run a, like a DVD, a Blu-ray, something like that in through the composite. It won't work on the HDMI, but you can run a camera through the HDMI if it supports HDMI output as well. So you could probably do that with the GoPro as well. So there's various ways of getting lots of different signals into this thing. And then to get them out, as I say, you can either come out through the composite output and feed to a projector or a TV, something like that, or a you know, switch a, um, a distribution box if you're in a venue, something like that or you can just run straight to the computer over the USB. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about that now. So what I've actually got set up here, this is Inkland's Mix Emergency software that I've got on the computer. Now with this, it has an option for a video input. Now I've got that set in here. We've got the HD FaceTime camera. You can plug in USB webcams and so on and so forth. But in my case, I've switched it to composite and that is the Vestax PBS4. That's the, what the driver is called basically in my computer. So I've got that there, I'm gonna turn that on and the software will take a second just to realize what it's getting from the Vestax. And there you go. You can now see I've got picture in picture in my software. So if I change the master output on the PBS4, I'm now looking at camera one, camera three, and the WD TV. And I can go for that full screen. So I can scale it up and control click, put that back in the middle again. So I can have that full screen overlaid whilst I'm mixing the videos underneath. I can also do, could blend it as well, so I can have it over the top. So this is one use where I would definitely find a use for this. There's this guy, DJ Wazza, who's been uh, posting on the Serato forums. He's been using it with Serato DJ, capturing it all with screen flow, and then he can edit the camera overlay from the PBS4 after the fact, so you can switch live and then put that over the top of your Serato video recording that you've done with ScreenFlow and so on. But in my case, I'm thinking, right, I could use this live. So I've got Mix Emergency running. I've got this thing going into the various ports and I can have these two cameras or four cameras even looking out at the audience. And so I've got the audience, the crowd are out there dancing. They're all out there going, hey, Mojax, you're the best DJ ever, hooray. And I'm switching between them while they're going crazy and they're dancing. And then I'm back, I can turn that off, basically scale. If you want to avoid that kind of little blue screen little thing, then all you do is just fade down the opacity, MIDI map that in Mix Emergency. Now I just fade them out. And there they are, and I can bring them back. And there they are, they're dancing, they're going crazy, and it's on the screens, putting out through my normal output from Mix Emergency. So let's say I'm outputting via HDMI to the club system, or I'm outputting via VGA to the club system, then that will all run out fine. And that's really putting no real strain on your computer at all other than what you're doing running mix emergency so i've got my normal video software running and this thing is just basically being treated by mix emergency as if it is like a regular webcam so actually there's very little stress being added to the system by having four different cameras running at the same time and as i say i can scale that down i can put that where i want on the screen and you can do the same thing with any sort of visuals software like Resolume or Archaos, something like that, Grand VJ, that kind of thing, and you can just overlay. Now, you'll notice that there is maybe a little jump, a slight little jump, when you actually cut between the different sources. It's probably more visible on this screen here, and you can see they're just kind of, and that's because it's not gen locked, and, and basically when, traditionally with old school analog video mixing stuff and video switching stuff that you find in TV studios, they have like a gen lock, it's like a time-based thing. So basically all of the cameras are locked in sync together and they're actually synced and their frame rates and so on are all completely synced. And that means when you switch between them, there is none of that, that sort of drop between the two. And obviously with this being a consumer device, it doesn't have that on there. I mean, ultimately all the cameras you're gonna plug in aren't gonna have that facility anyway. So 
you're going to have that problem regardless. But you'll notice if you look back at the screen itself, it's not as noticeable on the switching within the software. So, and you're not going to be going like this all night long anyway. That's not something you, know, you could in theory, but that's not what you're going to be doing. You're going to be switching a camera every now and again to a different one. And you can imagine then if this here is, say, let's go full screen on this for a minute. All right, this is your Skype window. You've got, I'll just make it actually full screen on Mix Emergency again. Like so. So we're full screen on the computer. This is sending out via Skype. So you've got two cameras trained on your office workers there and they're all sat around the desk and they're saying hello and you can switch to another camera. You can switch then to your presentation on your screen. So this is now my um, my PowerPoint that I'm sending out basically. So I'm sending this over the internet to someone else on the other end on Skype. Fantastic for video conferencing and that sort of thing. Fantastic for your live streaming. You know, this is, as long as you accept the limitations, you know, as long as you accept that it is SD, it's not a totally clean cut all the time, then really you are looking at a fantastically useful bit of kit. Definitely I can see myself making use of this with my video sets with Mix Emergency because that is a real boon. I've been looking at ways to get cameras in to my sets and the facility in Mix Emergency to actually do that overlay, the video input overlay, and you can even mini map different ones now as well, is fantastic. But you need a way really to get multiple cameras in there very easily to make use of it. One camera fixed all night. So in this one, I can have one camera on me, you know, over the booth, or I can have one camera pointing at one half of the crowd, one camera pointing at the other half of the crowd and really get that interaction with the crowd going. So from that point of view, it's very exciting and it does work very smoothly. Once you've got the driver installed, it's very easy to use. And once you, as I say, once you've got your head around how it's gonna work, you can also then, you've got your master, you can preview what's coming through your different cameras with that preview output. So you can have a small screen in the actual DJ booth and you can see what's coming in each camera before you switch it over to a different one and the options are all there. The sound quality is, is pretty good. It's all, you know, there's no balanced outs or anything like that, but that's not what it's for. You know, it's not designed to hook into a big sound system. It's designed to run into your computer. You can preview it obviously through the speakers you know, or through the, um, the actual line output. You can preview through the headphones and everything else, but it sounds great for broadcasting. Um, it's definitely worth looking at. If this is gonna fill a little niche in your life, then and I think in my case, it could fill that little niche of getting live cameras into my video sets without a doubt. Or if you want to get into web broadcasting, you know, nowadays, if you're on YouTube and you've got live, sub if you've got more than 100 subscribers, you can stream live on YouTube as well. And because your computer will see this as just any other webcam, you know, you can hook this up to your YouTube live streaming as well and just do live streaming as and when you want, very simply, multiple cameras, multiple sources. So there we go, that is the Vestax PBS4. It is on sale now. It's, uh, say, under £400 here in the UK. They do also do a kit with the two cameras included as well. I first saw this in action at the BPM show um, back in September, this before I went down to the BPM show myself. It was the day before, and Vestax themselves were streaming from their site. They had DJ Rasp and people like that actually performing on their stand at the BPM show, sending out via, I think it was Ustream, or live stream, and they were just going, and I saw, saw the link on Twitter, and you could literally just go and watch them all mixing away. The mixer was feeding into this, the cameras are feeding into this, they were switching the different cameras live, and it just works a treat for live streaming, works for all kind of little niches, whatever you've got in mind, so definitely worth investigating. Thank you very much for watching today. For more walkthroughs, tutorials, and tips and so on, please do subscribe to my channel. It's Mojax VDJ on YouTube. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.